Here we go. Advent of Code 2021. Day one. Uh, I'm not going to waste your time with an introduction. We're just going to get right into it. If you don't know what's going on, check the description. Let's go. Day one. Sonar sweep. You're minding your own business on a ship at sea when the overboard alarm goes off. So someone fell overboard. You rush to see if you can help. Apparently, one of the elves tripped and accidentally sent the sleigh keys flying into the ocean. Woof! Before you know it, you're inside a submarine. The elves keep ready for situations like this. It's covered in Christmas lights, because of course it is. It even has an experimental antenna that should be able to track the keys if you can boost its signal strength high enough. There's a little meter that indicates the antenna's signal strength by displaying 0 to 50 stars. Okay. Your instincts tell you that in order to save Christmas, you need to get all 50 stars by December 25th. Ah. The 50 stars. Okay. Collect stars by... Solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available in each day in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked. When you complete the first, each puzzle grants one star. Good luck. All right. Today's puzzle. I didn't know there would be a, a, an intro for the whole thing. As the submarine drops below the surface of the ocean, it automatically performs a sonar sweep of the nearby sea floor. On a small screen, the sonar sweep report, your puzzle input, appears. Each line is a measurement of the seafloor depth as the sweep looks further and further away from the submarine. Ah, I see. So this means that as we're going straight forward, if we don't change the submarine's elevation, the sea is getting deeper and deeper and deeper and then shallower and then deeper and then way deep and then way, way deep, a little bit shallower, a little bit deeper. Okay. This report indicates a scanning outwards the submarine. The sonar sweep found depths of yep, yep, yep. The first order of business is to figure out how quickly the depth increases just so you know what you're dealing with. You never know if the keys will get carried into deeper water by current or a fish or something. To do this, count the number of times a depth measurement increases from the previous measurement. And there is no measurement before the first one. So NA, that was an increase, right? So this is greater than, well, this is greater than that. This is greater than that. This is greater than that. So it's three increases. This is less than that. That's a decrease. Okay. And so on. There are seven measurements. How many measurements are larger than the previous measurement? Let's get the puzzle input. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's just do this. Copy. We're going to try some of this this year. New file. There we go. The I'll just make sure we paste it properly. Ninety seven forty five. Ninety-seven forty-five is the last one, and the first one was one eighty-seven. We can uh, delete that last line. One eighty-seven. Okay, we have the correct input text. We've got our little handy dandy template. That we use to start our advent of code projects. We'll call this sonar. Sweep one. What did we name them last year? Find 2020. Okay, yep. Yeah. So yeah, it's basically the name of the sonar sweep dash one. Cool. Okay, let's go back. Yeah, sonar sweep dash one. Great. Uh, that one is not indicating the day one. It's the directory is the day one. The, the dash one is because this is part one that for star one, there's going to be a second star. How many measurements are larger than the previous? Measurement. Great. This should be, that's all we got to do here. So let's do it. So, uh, parsed input equals parse the input file. How are we doing? For let parsed input dot append. So we've already got a list. So let us put a breakpoint. 
and run. Okay, and we should here. Yep, our parsed input is a list. Fantastic. Great, and everything's in order because we've already have this code from last year. Just to review the code from last year, briefly. All right, so we've got our main. Our main is going to, you know, parse the input here because basically all these have an input file. So the input file is going to be input.txt. That's what we made it right here. Uh, it's going to go and look and find, you know, get the full path of the file, open it up. And for each line in the file, for each, which is a number, it's going to take that file, read it, uh, and put it into this list, right? Because most of the inputs for advent of code are lists. However, you notice, let's run it again just so I can show you, that these are all strings. See these quotes? So actually, we know that we can trust that they're integers. Um, so we're going to do this. We'll do that. And now we can see that, come on. We got a problem. Oh, but did we take the break? We took the, oh, the break point's still there. What's happening? Something's happening. There we go. Yep, now we have integers. Okay, great. We're good. Okay, so now we'll make a we'll make a part one. So we'll get num. Uh, we want to know the num of increases or decreases. I already forgot. <laughs> number of times increases the depth. Number of times the depth increases, which is actually when yes, when the number is goes up. When we get a bigger number is lower depth. Bigger number, lower depth. Higher number, lower higher lower. Yeah. Uh, so get the number of depth increases and then we're going to have um depths right which is a list of integers uh so current val equals um none and then for depth in depths we just do it really straightforward we don't need to do this a fan there is probably a fancy way to do this we're not going to do it the fancy we do the straightforward way for each depth right now we're going to say if uh, current val is none, right, then current val equals depth. Oh, we'll say if current val is not none. Let's do that. And then, oh, num increases zero. And then at the end, we're going to return the number of increases. Fantastic. Okay. We already have that in place. Put our current val there. If the current val is not none, so current val is always going to get set equal to depth at after the um right but if the current val is not none if the uh depth is greater than the current val then num increases pl uh, plus equals 1 right and then set the current val equal to the depth fantastic okay so the part 1 result is going to be equal to get num depth increases in the parsed input. Okay, let's try it. 1665. Let's try it. That's the right answer. Very easy day one. That's what we expect on easy day one. To part two, we go. Okay. Before we read part two, I just want to um, go back here for a second and do a little copy and a little paste. Okay. And a little, little rename. Two. Great. Now we're ready with number two. Let's save that one. Okay, cool. All right. Let's go back. Considering every single measurement isn't as useful as you expected, there's just too much noise in the data. Instead, consider sums of a three-measurement sliding window. Okay. Consider the above example. Yeah, so it's a roll. It's a rolling average. All right, that's what it is. If you don't know what a rolling average is, you can Google it. But that's what we're doing here. I'm I'm assuming. Compare the first and second. 
three measurement windows. So we got the three A's and then the three B's, right? Their measurements in the first window are marked with A, right? The sum is uh, the second window is B, its sum is uh, the sum of the second window is larger than the first. So the first comparison increased, right? So you can't even compare with a three a three size window. You can't compare anything until even the fourth, right? So A, B, C, D, E, F, yep, and so on. Okay. Uh, the sum of the measurements in the second window is larger than the sum of the first, so the first comparison increased. Yeah, you could divide by three, um, but it's not necessary, right? Because you're comparing three to three, so dividing them both by three, it, they're, you know, the bigger one's still going to be bigger, so you don't need to do the division. You could just do the sum of the A's versus the sum of the B's. Okay. Count the number of times the sum and the sliding window increases from the previous sum. So if you compare A with B, then compare B with C and C with D and so on. Stop when there isn't enough left to create a new three measurement sum. The sum of each three measurement window is as follows. Yep. So there may be, oh, there are five sums larger than the previous sum. Consider, yep. How many sums are larger? Great. So there may be a, something in the Python library that already does a rolling average, uh, but we're not going to do that. We're going to actually make a very flexible um, a, a solution that's too flexible. Um, we're going to do depths, and we're going to do window size. Right? We're going to put the window size into a variable, even though we don't need to. I bet you tomorrow. That you know that might matter, and it'll be helpful to have done it this way. Okay, so we're still going to keep our a num increases equals zero, uh, and what we're going to do is we've got the length of the. Let's go out in here for a second. Sorry. Right, so let's say, <clears throat> let's say we've got a list of range uh, ten, right? Right, so D, uh, the length of D is going to be ten. Okay, so D, so see the final window will be on, will be the seven eight nine. Right, so if we do D colon three, oops, wrong wrong thing. So that's going right. So D zero colon three is going to be zero one two. So one four will be the next window. And so it would be is six nine. No, it's going to be se seven ten is the last window. So we want to the 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 first index, uh, the left half of the index, right, is going to start at zero, and it's going to go all the way up to the uh, length minus the window size. So we're going to say uh. For uh, i in range, right? So let me. So the, in this case, the range would be from zero to ten minus three, and that should be nope. It's going to be ten minus window size minus one. So it goes from zero to. Uh, the length of go, uh, the length of the depths minus the window size minus one. So that's our that's our index range, right? And we're going to say previous uh, window is going to equal none, okay? And then we're going to say just like before if Previous window not equal to none. Oh, we could just say if previous window is not none, just yeah. Uh, then the we're gonna do the sum. So can we? This is just sum. Okay, yeah. So uh, the previous. Oh, the uh, if. The sum of depths 
index. Oh, I. I colon I plus window size. Yeah. So if the sum of the three things in the current window is greater than previous, well, we'll call it previous window. So we'll, actually, we should do this. Uh, current window sum equals the sum of the depths. I colon I plus window size. Yep. All right, perfect. So if the previous window sum starts as nothing, if we have a previous window sum, actually, we're always going to make a current window sum no matter what. If the previous window sum is not none, and the current window sum is greater than the previous window sum, then the num increases uh, plus equals one. And then we're always going to, at the end, set the previous window sum to equal to the current window sum, and then carry forth, and then return the num increases. Looks good. And then down here, the part two result, uh, rolling average increases, uh, parsed input, uh, window. We don't even need to put the window sizes three because that's our default actually up here. We've made that the default on this uh, key uh, keyword argument. So, all right, let's let's just see what happens. Yep, we got a problem. Uh, what is the problem? Oh, the problem is this. Yeah. No. Let's try again. 1702, we have an answer. That's the right answer. We are done with day one, the easiest day. Didn't take very long at all. I will see you tomorrow.